सो नमस्ते धरणी धरा नमस्ते बलना श्रेष्ठ प्रलंबारे नमस्ते स्तु नमस्ते स्तु पाही माम कृष्ण पूर्वज हरे कृष्णा सो ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द अपियरेंस डे ऑफ लॉर्ड बलराम टुडे आई विल स्पीक ऑन द थीम ऑफ हाउ बलराम इज द बेस्ट फ्रेंड ऑफ कृष्णा एंड हाउ we can also be the true friend of our friends we can learn about friendship from balram ji and i'll talk about this in three broad parts a friend is one who sticks with us through thick and thin a friend is one who we can share good and bad news with one who understands our heart and third is a friend is one who does for us what we can't do for ourselves so krishna and balaram are actually god themselves in two separate forms the bhakti tradition reveals god to be not just one majestic person residing on top accepting worship and subordination from everyone else it describes that god is a person who enjoys the rich spectrum of relationships that we aspire to enjoy in life and that means that he arranges in his leela in his playful pastimes to have different people play different roles so there are devotees who may become his mother who may become his father there are devotees who may become his friends now in some of these relationships there are devotees who play very close roles to him for him and in some of these it is he himself who expands to play a particular role now when there is this expansion at that time this krishna is god balaram is also god and yet although they are one person they are two personalities and each of both of them have their own personality by which they interact with each other and krishna's personality charms balaram and balaram's personality charms krishna so if we look at the life of krishna overall we can see what are the significant changes the dramatic points that happen in his life if we look at our own lives also if we look at the past the past is not just like a flat territory that extends for years upon years till as long as we can remember the past is more like a territory that is filled with peaks and then flat that means we don't remember everything about the past we remember certain incidents from the past when something significantly special significantly different from the normal happened and usually that is the time when the people around us count the most if you if you are riding on a straight road then we can just go on our own but if we have to we come to intersection should i go this way or that way then a true friend is one who tells us okay go this way so you show the right way for us so similarly if we look at the life of krishna there are broadly three places where krishna lived which are those three places can anyone know sorry bhakti yeah of course he lives where our bhakti is but during his descended pastimes in this world vrindavan mathura and then dwarka now if you look at the 10th canto of the shrimad bhagavatam there are 90 chapters and this describe krishna leela in this 
the first 40 chapters describe Krishna's presence in Vrindavan. The next 10 chapters describe his presence in Dwarka, so uh, in Mathura. And from the 50th chapter onwards, it is describing Krishna's base in Dwarka. Although Krishna travels to various places and do various, does various things. So not much happens in Dwarka, but he is based in Dwarka and from there he is ruling the world. Now, actually speaking, in all these three places, there are only two people who are with Krishna in all three places. And sometimes we have friends, some friends are maybe one year old, some friends are ten years old, some friends are twenty years old. Sometimes we meet, you know, we meet somebody and then somebody, a third person say, maybe these two people don't know each other and they introduce, you know, this person say, oh, we know each other, we go back a long time. So Krishna and Balaram go back a long time practically to the birth. And so it is who are the two characters who are with Krishna, two people who are with Krishna throughout in Vrindavan, Mathura and Dwarka. Who are they? Balaram is of course one and the other is? Subhadra is not there in Vrindavan, she is not manifest. Udhavji. Udhav is very close to the mood of Vrindavan and he is among the Dwarka Vasis who understands Vrajabhav the most. However, Uddhava is not in Vrindavan during Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes. Rohini. Rohini, yes. Who's that? Yeah, thank you. So, Rohini is there with Krishna in all these three places. However, Rohini is again not there with Krishna when he travels. So for example, when Krishna goes to Gurukul and he's staying in the Gurukul. At that time, Rohini is not there. At that time, who is there with him? Only Balaram. So Krishna and Balaram, right throughout, they're there together. And just, if we know somebody for a long time, and if that relationship itself goes on for a long time, then that indicates there must be a certain level of proximity. Not just proximity, but even intimacy. Otherwise, relationships are remarkably difficult to sustain. So now, Krishna and Balaram, right from their childhood, although technically Balaram is uh, about a, is older than Krishna, but in their upbringing, they are almost together. They are named together, they play together. Krishna respects Balaram because he is the, he's the brother who is older in age to him. But they are always together. And Mother Yashoda, she also respects Balaram as the older brother. That is why whenever Krishna goes out to the forest, Mother Yashoda is initially very anxious. Oh, you know, Krishna, my little boy, so many demons have been attacking him. How will he be safe in the forest? But then Nanda Maharaj says, Balram will be with him. Oh, if Balram is there, then he will take care. So, Yashoda, although Balram is not her son, Balram is Rohini's son, but she feels Krishna is very naughty, very restless. But Balram is mature. So, Balram will take care of Krishna. Now, Krishna shares the deepest secrets of his heart with Balaram and we will not go into the various pastimes specifically which Krishna and Balaram performed but we look at as I said the change points where the, the importance of Balaram's presence in Krishna's life comes up. When Krishna is just a barely a 10 year old boy at that time, suddenly, he is taken from the place where he has grown up forever and he has grown up till then and he is taken to another place entirely. Now, at one level, we understand Krishna is God and as God, he is omnipotent, he is omniscient. But Krishna in his Leela does not act as God. Why is that? Because lovability 
requires vulnerability when we love someone what are the, what are the broad factors when we love someone uh, we want somebody to be powerful maybe wealthy attractive wise we talk about the six attributes of krishna the six opulences of krishna so normally if you want to form a relationship with someone we want to have a person who has certain virtues who is strong not just physically but in terms of virtues in terms of strengths and so we are inspired we are attracted by somebody who is very wise very strong very skillful but at the same time in any relationship we want to be attracted to the person other person but we also need to feel needed by the other person say many of you have children now imagine if you could play god with your child that means you could reengineer a child to be free from whatever weaknesses whatever deficiencies whatever vulnerabilities he has so maybe he's too small or too thin he becomes like a super bodybuilder maybe he doesn't have such a good memory you make him reengineer him and make him the next albert einstein <coughs> now maybe he's not that attractive and then you reengineering him and make him make him into a, a, a hollywood star now if gradually you remove everything that is imperfect about him you might have a super human being but then he doesn't need you and a primary intensifier of the parental relationship with a child is that the parent feels that the child needs me so if you remove all that makes the child vulnerable eventually you will find out that the love in the relationship will go away or to put it another way say somebody who who is very resourceful very expert very shrewd very wise you know suppose if they are whenever you have any problems you go and ask them and they give solutions to the problems but then suppose one day they tell you actually you know i am facing this problem now when they tell that they okay i am facing this this problem now generally a we put on a front in front of the world the world is a tough place today's culture is cruelly competitive but even without this cruel competition the world is still a tough place and people around us can exploit our weaknesses so suppose a boxing match is going on and one boxer just touches the with a grazing blow touches the jaw of the other person other boxer and that boxer wins it ah. immediately box and say okay is weak over here so then the rule in any fight any competition is hit where it hurts so the other boxer will just hit at the jaw again and again and again and cause that person to just lose the match so in general we know that we can't show our weaknesses to the world because the world can exploit them however we can't just put on a front all the time we need to be ourselves we ourselves means yes our strengths and our weaknesses so if we share our vulnerabilities with someone now that indicates a certain level of trust in that relationship when i'm telling you that i have these problems i am i am having faith that you won't use this knowledge to exploit me you won't use this knowledge against me and then if the person who solves our problems always share some of their problems then we if we actually feel attracted in a different way to that person yes they also have problems but still they are perceiving strongly so it is the admission of vulnerability that leads to the increase in lovability and this applies even to the divine human relationship so if krishna is perfect and he doesn't need anyone then that relationship will not have the intensity so madhuri shoda feels that if krishna does not if i don't feed krishna 
krishna will die he will be hungry he will become weak and he will die so similarly when just as krishna admits his vulnerability so that with the ishoda will feel needed vitally indispensably needed in that relationship so similarly in the relationship between krishna and balaram krishna acts like a restless fickle mischievous boy and thus balram acts as the protector as the wise person so krishna acts with this vulnerability so that balram feels needed and it is not just vulnerability in terms of irresponsibility the vulnerability comes up especially when krishna has to take up a huge responsibility so krishna is just a small boy about 10 and suddenly he is ripped out of his home and he is told now you have to stay in mathura so krishna when he goes to mathura he has no intention to stay in mathura his intention is just to deal with kamsa finish kamsa and come back to vrindavan but then the yaduvasis the yadus the mathura vasis say say actually kamsa was not alone kamsa has allies across the whole world and you have saved us from him but who will save us from his allies who will wreak vengeance on us when he they they come to know that kamsa is dead so now krishna says that you know i can go back to vrindavan and i'll come back whenever needed he says no when they attack there will be no time for you to come back this is no but i i belong to rindavan and they said no you belong to us you are the son of vasudev now nanda maharaj actually never accepts that krishna is not his son nanda maharaj never directly tells or admits that krishna is not my son and they say actually you killed kamsa the yadu say and it was the ashtam garbha the eighth child of devaki that was going to kill kamsa so because you kill kamsa that means you are that eighth child of devaki that means you actually belong to mathura not to vrindavan and therefore you should stay here and at that time now it is krishna is such a small a small 10 year old boy uh, and at that time as generally for a child no matter how grow how much they grow up at least as long as they are in the pre teens their defining sense of identity comes from their parents normally ask a child and then you ask him who are your parents oh i am uh, but now suddenly for a child to come to know that his parents are actually foster parents and then his parents are real parents Now, even if that that itself is quite disorienting, even traumatizing, but even if that is there, at least it is broken gently. And then after that, there is a gradual period. Okay, maybe the both parents come and meet, and gradually they get to know each other, and then gradually the relationship develops. But here, Krishna has to suddenly leave his foster parents and come to be with his both parents. and then the yadus are even stronger in gopal champu which is a book written by jiva goswami it's described how the yadus were very concerned that if krishna if krishna stays in touch with the brajivasis they will captivate him so much that he will not come back so they want him to not be in touch with them also and then krishna is also worried concerned about the brajivasis now it is the yadus they leave it to krishna says krishna you have to stay with us and then krishna comes and he has to tell the news to his parents and actually the brajwal the mathura was they are claiming that i am their son and they want me to stay here now nanda maharaj is so disturbed so disappointed so devastated and he says that krishna it is our fortune that krishna is is actually crying he, he can't even cry his his heart is crying 
this, he says, Krishna, we will stay here, we'll come and stay here. So Krishna says, no, there's not enough place for all of you, and especially for our cows to stay here. And he says, then we will keep coming regularly. And now here Krishna has to put a heavy boulder on his heart and he says, no, please never come here. Then you should come. He says, no, I can also not come back. He says, why? And he says, I cannot be at two places. I cannot be at Vrindavan and uh, Mathura both. So if Kamsa's and if Kamsa's friends come to know that I am closely related with you, then they will come and attack you. And if I am Mathura, I won't be able to protect you. So therefore, it's important for the world to feel that actually I have no last, no, no deep affection for you. I just happened to grow up at your place, but as soon as I came back home, I forgot all of you. Now just when Krishna speaks this, I forgot all of you. That's like a thunderbolt in the heart of Nanda Maharaj. But Nanda Maharaj accepts it because Krishna says so. And now Krishna is achingly alone. The, the Vrajavasis have all gone. And now even the Vrajavasis are concerned. Nanda Maharaj is concerned. No, I am some, I'm a simple coward boy. I am a simple coward man. And Mathura has so much royal opulence. Will Krishna forget us? Will Krishna prefer his birth parents to us who gave him our everything? So at this time, Krishna can't be with the Vrajavasis. Krishna also knows that the Vrajavasis are doubting whether I still love them or not. And at that time, he is so alone. Uh, the greatest loneliness is not when we are physically alone. The most painful loneliness is when we are surrounded by people who don't understand us. And such is the predicament of Krishna. Because the Rajivasis, those who have me allowed, they are thinking, is Krishna going to be allured by Mathura and leave us and go away? And the Mathuravasis are thinking, if Krishna speaks anything about Vrindavan also, they immediately start disapproving. They think that if Krishna never speaks about Vrindavan, Krishna will forget Vrindavan. And then, at that, that way, he will be safely with us. So when Krishna is alone like this, who is the one person who understands him? Balaram. Balram has been in Vrindavan and he has come to Mathura. Suppose we are practicing bhakti and we are practicing bhakti very seriously. Krishna is the center and the purpose of our life. And then somehow our job, our family obligations force us to go away from the association of devotees. And then we are all alone and there is no one with whom we can talk about Krishna. There are maybe many people around us. But if the people don't share our values, people don't understand us, then we feel so alone. So, if we are far away in a country where there are no devotees, and there we meet even one devotee, and we feel such joy, at least I can talk with someone with, who, who can understand my heart. So that person becomes so dear. So Krishna and Balram are already very close to each other. But this is the time when Krishna is vulnerable. He is alone. He fears that everybody to some extent suspects him. The Vrajavasi suspect him, the Madhuravasi suspect him. And the only person who understands him is Balaram. And of course to some extent Rohini also understands. Now Krishna has to suddenly come back and now, there is one lady whom he has always called his mother and now from suddenly he comes to Mathura and he has to address Devaki as his mother. He says, can't do it. It's just not natural. And Vasudev sees this and Vasudev says, let's go what to do now. He says, oh, Rohini was from here, there. he calls Rohini also back. Initially when Krishna and Balram come, Rohini doesn't come. At that time, because they know Kamsa is hostile, 
so no females come initially only the nanda maharaj uh, krishna and the gopals come in, along with balram of course but then he calls for rohini and rohini comes back and krishna runs and hugs rohini's feet and he sees her and he pours out his heart to her now balram is his friend but he needs somebody older who can understand him and then quickly rohini understands and then she tries to explain to the rajava to the mathura vasis how much krishna loves the mathura vrindavan vasis and how much the rajava vasis love krishna and when she starts speaking about them the mathura vasis start thinking have you also become a rajavasi are you also on their side and he says you know what kind of sweets do these rajavasis feed everyone who goes there that everybody forgets their home their roots and they just start loving vrindavan and like that not only they don't understand her but they start suspecting her also so then rohini also cannot speak too much about vrindavan and thus again krishna is left only with balaram so at this point when nobody understands him krishna and balaram are together and often krishna and balaram sit together and they talk and they talk about vrindavan and they keep talking about vrindavan and in that talking about vrindavan they relieve the agony of their heart and then whenever krishna and balram are talking alone for too long at that time the mathura vasis again become suspicious they talk about vrindavan and then krishna himself persuades vasudev he says actually and vasudev also gets that inspiration that he has to go to a gurukul because he has to learn he so then they both go to the gurukul of sandipani muni and there they learn various skills krishna and balram it is said they learn everything very fast and they learn everything fast and after that as soon as the days classes are over they go back to the place where they are staying and they again talk about vrindavan keep talking about vrindavan and in that way sometimes as they talk about vrindavan tears come from the eyes of both of them and they just tightly hug each other and try to relieve each other's agony in separation from vrindavan so a friend is one who understands us who understands us when we go through pains they understand our pain and they do the the friend is one who does the best to help us navigate that pain and is that which balram does for krishna always and not only that so in our relationships also whenever somebody is going through some pain if at that time we are there for them that can create a bond which can last through many many storms and when we are needed if we are not there that time that can create a rupture now when we are needed and we if are not there then after that we may do a hundred things for that person but they will not be able to trust us cause it's like you are a fair weather friend when i needed you you were not there other times you are there what's the what's so big deal so ultimately it's not friendship is not just created by how how often we meet of course that's important but it is it is when we need a friend if that person is there or not for us so now sometimes people openly tell us that i need you can you come here but but many times people don't tell us that when they are going through distress if we have bonded with them well then even if they don't express that need we understand that need and then that is just like uh the prabhupad said the best servant is one who understands the mind of the spiritual master and follows the instruction and does what is required similarly the best friend is one 
who understands the need of another friend and is there to address that need. So Balaram is that kind of friend. And when Krishna is vulnerable, Krishna is just a small child who is alone, cut off from his parents, cut off from all those whom he has loved and who, has lo who have loved him. At that time when he is vulnerable, Balaram does not make fun of him. Balaram doesn't call him, oh you are a crybaby. Balaram is there with him, sharing his joy, sharing his sorrows. One way we can know who are our friends is by looking at with whom can we share good news and bad news. Suppose we share some good news, something wonderful has happened in our life. And you know, the other person starts thinking, you know, why did this have to happen to you? I deserve this much more than you. Why do all the good things happen to you and all the bad things happen to me? Now, even if they don't speak like that, there is much that is spoken through our gestures. And especially when people are close to each other, you know, even without, sorry, there is much that is spoken without our words, just through our gestures. And not just, just through our gestures, <coughs> sometimes even a slight hesitation in ex making the appropriate expression, that can also cause Suppose we give some, some good news and that person hesitates to congratulate us. Hey, what's going on here? <coughs> so, Krishna and Balaram, they share their heart entirely with each other. Krishna has told Nanda Maharaj, you should not come here, nor will I come there. But Nanda Maharaj keeps sending messengers to find out how is Krishna, how is Krishna. And now when Krishna and Balarama are not there, the messengers, they can't detect Krishna. And the Mathuravasis don't answer their questions. And the Mathura don't answer the Mathura was just think that, you know, if we just remove Krishna's connection with Vrindavan, then Krishna will stop remembering them and Rajvasis will also stop remembering him. So they discourage. Now the Mathuravasis are not bad intentioned. They are simply concerned that Krishna should stay with us. <clears throat> so what happens is now when Rohin, when Krishna and Balram come back. Now Rohini notices all this, what is happening? And Rohini tries to sneak in and give some news. And actually Krishna has gone to this Gurukul and he's come and come, he'll come back after some time. But when they come back and they know, come to know that actually Krishna and Balaram come to know that the Rajivasis don't even know. And Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda go into panic. Now where is Krishna? We thought Krishna went to Mathura and Krishna is not in Mathura. Where, where is he? So they don't know and thus they become very panicky. And then when he comes to, now when we love someone and if they are disturbed, then naturally we also become disturbed. So when Krishna, Krishna comes to know that the Vrajivasis are disturbed, he naturally becomes disturbed. What, what do I do? And then again, he meets the messengers who have come and tells them I'm alright and sends some gifts for Krishna for for the Vajivasis. And then after that, as Krishna and Balaram continue on, now a situation comes in his life where they grow old, but Kamsa has so many allies. And although some people are killed, but still other demons are still there. And it's not easy to finish all of them. So what, what does Krishna do? The Mathuravasis think that if we can form, if, 
we want to we want to tie krishna to this place and how do we tie he said that let us get krishna married and there is but actually krishna cannot marry first because he is a younger brother so first balram has to be married and then when balram whom does balram marry revati so when he is to marry revati at that time the first thing that happens is that balram sends a message to the prajivasis seeking their permission and blessings that this is the arrangement that is being made and i seek your blessings and now everybody knows that balram is from mathura when nanda maharaj hears this he is happy but at the same time he is concerned he thinks what is going to happen to krishna whom will krishna marry if krishna marries a vaishya krishna marries a vrajavasi then he is accepting that he belongs to raja but if krishna gets married to a kshatrayani krishna gets married to a royal princess then krishna is accepting that i belong to mathura and that is everything that happens in vrindavan so in with krishna in mathura and in dwarka that has strong emotional effect on the brajwasis and krishna because krishna loves the brajwasis so much and the brajwasis love krishna so much krishna understands what is going on in their hearts and then time and time the demons keep coming and attacking mathura and if you see mathura and vrindavan are not that far away actually you could say that mathura is closer to vrindavan than what london is to leicester so if somebody attacks london and leicester would be concerned isn't it so many of the armies that pass by that go to attack in mathura they pass by vrindavan and the brajwasis have to flee from their homes and hide in the forests so then finally krishna decides that the danger for the brajwasis is too much sometimes when armies are on a attack they sometimes out of the anger just go on a rampage and they cannot defeat their target their enemy then they might just destroy whoever they can find and just vent out their anger so he says i can't afford this happening to the brajwasis and therefore krishna decides i will go far away from vrindavan <coughs> now at one level when he goes far away from vrindavan his intention is to protect the brajwasis but that action mortifies the brajwasis at least krishna was close in mathura although we can't go but if we need to go we can go any time but when krishna goes across the country and not just across the country he goes into an island fortress which is that dwarka and in that the brajwasis are completely mortified what is going to happen so while krishna is in mathura at that time krishna sends uddhava as a messenger it's a very moving story but we can't we don't have time to go into that but eventually when krishna is in dwarka at that time balaram loses patience with krishna and he says krishna you know how much the brajwasis leave you love you and their love has not decreased you know that from the report that uddhava gave you of the plight of the brajwasis do you have a heart of stone after hearing the news of how much the brajwasis are in agony and separation from you from you how can you not go to vrindavan so krishna looks at balram and just falls on his shoulder and starts crying and he says every single day i long to go to vrindavan but Nanda Maharaj has told me, obey the yadus. 
while you are here treat vasudev like me and he says i cannot displease them i cannot disobey them he says my heart is pulled by the ropes of love towards vrindavan but there are shackles that tie my feet here to dwarka i cannot go as krishna and balrama thinking now can we send someone else as a messenger because they are also concerned in the rajivasis are feeling so much agony in separation from krishna but then they decide that krishna knows whom can i send he had himself said i'll come back soon but soon soon is like a elastic word soon can mean in an hour soon can mean in an year soon can mean even in a decade so uh, oh, krishna cannot go he has already said uddhav and uddhav has said yes krishna loves you krishna cares for you krishna remembers you and as soon as the demons are killed krishna will come so krishna and balram think of uddhav uddhav says i am not going again i am not going again he said i cannot be able to see the terrible agony of the rajivasis and they will not trust me now so then as they are thinking now krishna because balram is older to him krishna doesn't want balram to act like his messenger or his servant but balram understands krishna's heart and as krishna and balram are thinking and they are looking at each other balram says i will go and krishna embraces balram and he says please convey to the rajivasis that i fondly remember them constantly it is in vrindavan is the moments that i enjoyed they are the sweetest memories of my entire life and he gives a very sweet heart rending heartfelt message and then balram goes now balram has never been separated from krishna for very long and for balram at one level he doesn't want to leave krishna but balram knows that it is it is krishna's heart's desire and therefore it becomes balram's heart desire of course balram also loves the rajivasis and naturally he wants to go there but he also loves krishna and he doesn't want to leave krishna so all the balram feels torn in leaving krishna but he decides that for krishna's sake i will go away from krishna and there when he went to zandavan for two full months krishna pacifies balram pacifies and satisfies the rajivasis he they are suffering an agony in separation from krishna and balram speaks about krishna balram performs a ras leela with his own gopis and the gopis of krishna observe and they feel pacified by remembering how krishna had similar loving dealings with him day and night krishna is speaking balram is speaking about krishna balram is acting on krishna's behalf and balram is healing the wound, wounded hearts of the rajivasis and thus balram does for krishna what he himself can't do and it is in that role of acting as a bridge between krishna and those whom krishna loves that balaram manifests in our spiritual life also balaram represents the guru tattva and the guru acts as a bridge between krishna and us we are separated right now in the we are in the material world krishna is in the spiritual world the guru prabhupad said is not one the guru ultimately is one in tattva but whoever inspires us toward krishna 
whoever gives us the knowledge of krishna whoever increases our attraction toward krishna that person is the representative of balaram and that person can uh, can inspire us to come closer and closer to balaram so the word balaram has two parts we we'll conclude with this and then we can have a few questions if any balaram has two parts bala and ram so of course at one level this means that balaram is the one who gets a ram in exhibiting bala one who delights ram is to delight to get joy one who gets joy in exhibiting his power so dharani dhara we discussed in the beginning that balaram when he got upset with the kauravas when he got angry with them he just used his aladhara he used his plow and he ripped up the earth he ripped up the whole city of the of the of the kurus and it was extremely powerful so that 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 one who delights in exhibiting strength that is balaram but balaram also has a meaning for us in the sense of the bridge so we are in the material world krishna is in the spiritual world and we while practicing bhakti need bala and rama we need bala we need strength to resist the distractions the temptations the tribulations of the world there are so many things in this world which allure us come on do this do this do this do this and then we can get distracted from krishna so we need strength to say no to the world's allurements and balaram the good spiritual master gives us that strength the spiritual master speaks the message of krishna speaks the philosophy of krishna krishna and by that philosophy we understand that whatever is attractive in this world it actually manifests the spark of krishna's splendor so the things in this world can give us pleasure but that pleasure is like a drop what krishna can give us is like a ocean and therefore understanding this we get the strength the bala to resist the allurements of this world siddhanta bali achitte na kare alas iha haite krishna lage sudruda manas he says don't think that because all this is philosophy i am not interested in philosophy i am interested only in lila no by the philosophy we understand that apart from krishna nothing is truly meaningful and that gives us bala but just saying no to the world is not enough we need to say yes to krishna and to say yes to krishna means we need to connect with krishna we need to remember krishna we need to get joy in connecting with krishna and remembering krishna and serving krishna and that ram is given by balaram <coughs> our the spiritual master or our spiritual guides they try to engage us <coughs> they try to engage us in service in such a way that we can joyfully practice bhakti so when we get ram when we start getting joy in our connection with krishna in our service to krishna then we can move forward steadily and there is giving us bala and ram is the gift of balaram and on this day today on balaram of purnima we can pray to balaram ji that he give us these twin gifts the gift of strength to resist the world's allurements and the gift of taste in our service to krishna so i'll summarize i spoke today about how balaram acts as the best friend of krishna and it talked about friendship is tested through tough times so who stays with us to thick and thin so i talked about balram's friendship in three ways how he sticks by krishna's side through thick and thin there are three phases in krishna's life and balram is the one constant apart from rohini but rohini also cannot be as close to krishna as balram can be so when we are uh, when we seek friends or we want to be friends with someone then we there is thick and thin to the person 
uh, thick and thin through that person, that's important. And especially when the person needs us. Needs can be of different kinds. So God is poor, he doesn't need anyone. But God exhibits vulnerability to increase loveability. And it is when Krishna is vulnerable, being alone, in fear of being misunderstood by the Vrajavasis and the Mathuravasis, it is Balaram who understands him. So, a friend is one who, un who understands our heart, who understands our need even without our speaking that need. A friend is one who understands what kind of emotions we are going through. And Balaram is the one who is so empathic with Krishna. And then lastly, a friend is one who understands what we need and does it even without our asking. So Krishna is motive, Krishna is afflicted considering how the Vrajivasis are afflicted. And he can't do he go himself because he's obliged to be with the Yadus. So then Balram himself says, I will go on your behalf. And although for Balram it is painful to leave Krishna and go, but he goes out of his love for Krishna and he alleviates the distress of the Vrajavasis. And in being a bridge between Krishna and those whom Krishna loves, Balaram acts like the spiritual master. And for us, the spiritual master helps us connect with Krishna, helps us to feel the presence of Krishna in his absence. When we are in the material world, a distance from him right now. And Balaram is one who gets joy in doing strong, exhibiting, exhibiting strength. But Balaram is also the one who gives Bala and Ram to us. Who gives us the strength to resist the world's allurements. And who gives us taste Ram in our service to Krishna. So thank you very much. Shri Balaram Ji Ki. Let us conclude by repeating the prayer which we had started with initially. Namaste Dharani Dhara Namaste Dharani Dhara Namaste Balanam Sreshta Namaste Balanam Sreshta Pralambare Namaste Stu Pralambare Namaste Stu Pahi Mam Krishna Purvaja Pahi Mam Krishna Purvaja Shri Balram Ji Ki Jai Shri Balram Purnima Mahamotsav Ki Jai Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai I go to Premananda Do we have a few minutes for questions? Okay, does anyone have any questions? Yes please, Guru Thank you, Sajan Chavko Just wondering, the spiritual master gives instructions and say if we if we were in front of Lord Balaram, would have been would his instructions have actually been the same as the spiritual master? And just to extend on that question, if the if we take initiation of one spiritual master, uh, and then we instead took initiation of another another spiritual master, would we have received the same type of instructions? If it's, uh, if it's ultimately coming from Balar Lord Balaram. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so, if we, if Balaramji directly gave us instructions, and if our spiritual master gave us the instructions, would the two be the same? And if we had taken anything from other spiritual masters, so would we have got the same instructions on that spiritual master as our present spiritual master? See, for this, we have to understand that Krishna's plan is resourceful enough to include our individuality. What that means is that sometimes we think of Krishna's plan as like one straight line. And if we go along with that plan, then everything is happening right. If we go off that plan, we go off that plan. But Krishna has given us free will. And free will means that it's not that Krishna expects us to be like robots. Krishna doesn't expect us to uh, not have consciousness, not have aspirations, 
but for a devotee the, the aspirations the dreams they are all for serving krishna so that means that krishna's plan is so resourceful that it accommodates our individuality so if we are connected with a particular spiritual master each spiritual master is an individual and krishna acts through them according to their individuality if we consider the pandavas all five pandavas are considered to be great devotees pure devotees but each of them has their individuality and on the same issue sometimes bhima says we should fight and this says let's not fight now they are pure devotees both of them but they have that doesn't mean just because they are purely surrendered to krishna doesn't mean that they lose their individuality so krishna inspires devotees from within their heart and that inspiration works in harmony with that devotee's individuality so oh <clears throat> is it that so regarding the first question is it that whatever balram ji whether we get the same instruction from balram ji and our spiritual master it is the same purpose but the specifics will be according to individuality the lord has many plans for many souls and the lord may execute one plan through one soul and the lord may execute another plan through another soul so krishna does not expect yudhishthir to be as expert as archery as is arjuna and krishna does not expect bhim to be as specific as yudhishthir so krishna executes his will keeping in mind the individuality of each person so uh, if we were initiated by another spiritual master it is not necessary that we would have got exactly the same instruction the purpose of taking us toward krishna will be the same but it will be uh, it will be executed according to the particular individuality of the spiritual master and not just the individuality of the spiritual master is also the individuality of the disciple so that's why we have to recognize that at one level we need to have submission toward the spiritual master but at another level we also need uh, to do negotiation with the spiritual master what do i mean by negotiation just as we see uh, dhruva uh, when he was insulted and he went to the forest narad muni came in front of him and he said you are a small child the children don't take such insults seriously go back home and if you think you have grown up and mature then even adults those who are spiritually advanced they don't take insults so seriously so go back home and at that time what does <coughs> druva say so the words you speak are true but they find no place in my heart because my heart is grievously wounded by the insult that i have had to sustain so i need to get a kingdom bigger than my fathers please guide me for that otherwise let me go on my way so is this is not considered rebellion so it's not that we in the name of surrender have to suppress our individuality or suppress our needs so we can negotiate and of course initially Uh, we need to learn submission and discipline but bhakti is bhakti channels our individuality it doesn't suppress our individuality okay Does that answer your question thank you so much thank you any, any other questions so let me just expand on that okay um, just one more question please um when we surrendering to the spiritual master are we surrendering to the individual or is it always surrendering to the buddha as well or always surrendering to balram okay when we are surrendering to the spiritual master are we surrendering to the individual or the guru tattva or balram who it's all together it's broadly as well practicing bhakti or especially taking initiation is like committing ourselves to the process that will connect us with krishna and that process includes many things 
That process includes our practices of bhakti, our sadhana bhakti practices. That process includes our various services. That process includes our relationship with our spiritual master. We can't fragment one thing and emphasize only that. So there are, uh, there is a general principle in bhakti that whenever there is glorification, there is no reservation in glorification. There is no uh, qualification or uh, contextualization. Say for example, the holy name is to be glorified. Chaitanya Charita Amrut, there is a verse which says the holy name is so powerful in Kali Yuga that even without initiation from a Guru, the holy name will take you to Krishna. Hmm? So because when a particular limb of bhakti is to be glorified, the general mood of the tradition is glorified incessantly. Say, for example, the spiritual master is to be glorified. And say, without the spiritual master's mercy, you can get no mercy at all. If a dham is to be glorified, he says, Vrindavan dham is to be glorified. He says, that actually, if somebody has never come to Vrindavan, has never sanctified themselves by beholding the sacred places of Vrindavan, then their whole human life is a waste. If somebody has never got the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then why did they even live? Better that they have died before their birth. So there are statements like this in scripture. So these script statements, they are for, if you look at it, they are there for almost every limb of devotional service. So we needn't minimize them, but it is for us to contextualize them. That this is the general mood in bhakti literature that in the bhakti tradition that one one limb is glorified it is glorified without reservation without uh, so we need to understand the broader context and various elements combine together to uh, pro inspire and propel us on the path of bhakti so yes when we surrender to the spiritual master at the time of initiation or thereafter it is surrendering to the spiritual master who is in front of us but it is not just to them that spiritual master is a representative of Balrami, the, the spiritual master is a representative of the tradition that spiritual master is a representative of the teacher who is inspiring us to move closer toward Krishna so we cannot isolate any aspect of the process from the purpose of the process and that is why we see that when Bali Maharaj gets an instruction from Shukracharya, who is his guru, which is unfavorable to his surrender to Krishna, surrender to Vamandev, then he turns away from that guru. So now that is of course an extreme example and that is not what is that. But the principle over there is that there is a process and there is a purpose of the process. So when each of the limbs or each of, each of the processes are glorified, they are glorified as if they are all in all. That is the mood of devotion. But we need to see the process in the light of its purpose. And we have to take individual responsibility to make sure that we pursue that purpose. And for us at different times, different limbs of bhakti might be the best processes for us to pursue that purpose. So if we have the close association of a spiritual master and if we can be enriched by that association, when it's available and it's enriching, just grab it wholeheartedly. But when it is not available, that doesn't mean that we, are, we have to live deprived. Take shelter of the Bhagavatam, take shelter of uh, preaching, take shelter of deity worship, whatever. So, if we see the processes in the light of the purpose, then we can ensure that we respect the process and also we respect the purpose, both. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Prabhu? Okay. Father is passing it, 
But whilst he has been in the prison all this time and had six children with Deborah, I was wondering if you had any insights into Okay, yeah. So, how exactly was Balram conceived? So basically, what happens is, <coughs> okay, it's it's a little complicated, but how, when we know that there is the seventh pregnancy which Devaki has, at that time, it appears as if she has a miscarriage and she loses that child. But actually, Sankarshana. Sankarshana means to link. So what has happened is that the child from her womb is transferred to Rohini's womb. Now, thereafter, it is said that Rohini at a particular time because it is Devaki's child, which is going to be a threat for Kamsa. So, Kamsa arrests Devaki and then he arrests uh, Vasudev also. But he doesn't necessarily persecute the other queens or other family members of Vasudev in the same way. But still, there is always a fear because demons are fickle. So, then eventually it is described in the Gopal Champu that Vasudev he has even in the prison and everything he has he's a king so he has his spies a little bit so he conveys to Rohini that for her safety she should leave and she should go to Mathura sorry to Vrindavan and they arrange that she goes alone on a single horse normally queens will go with royal entourage in, in chariots escorted by soldiers but she goes alone on a single horse so that she will not attract any attention of anyone. And he has also informed, uh, uh, he has also informed uh, Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda Maharaj welcomes her and then Yashoda and uh, Rohini become like sisters. And they both uh, take care of their two children. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much. Shri Balram Purnima Ki. Yeah. Gaur Premanande. Okay.